To show you binomial expansion, we need to look at one special thing first, and it's called Pascal's Triangle. Pascal's Triangle is a pattern that was developed that has a lot of different chemical uses. We're going to use Pascal's Triangle for the binomial expansion. So Pascal's Triangle starts out with a 1. And then think of there being imaginary zeros right here and right here. We're going to call this one the zero row. Then I'm going to go zero plus one is one. One plus zero is one. Then to make the next row, well this row would be the first row. Then to make the next row, you put ones on the outside and you add the numbers above it. So one plus one is two. So this, because there's a 2 there, that is the second row. You put 1's on the outside. 1 plus 2, there and there, would be 3. 2 plus 1 is also 3. So that would be the third row. To find the fourth row, 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6, and 3 plus 1 is 4. You could keep doing this row or this pattern forever, really. 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, and that is 5. Let's do one more row. So we have 1, 6, 5 plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, 15, 6, and 1. And you can find the 7th row, the 8th row, the 9th row, whatever row you want. Binomial expansion is where we take a binomial, a first term plus a second term, in this case a plus b, and we raise it to the nth power. So we're going to expand it out without having to FOIL a bunch. So the steps to binomial expansion are as follows. Step 1 is to write out the coefficients of the nth row of Pascal's triangle. And then n is the power of the binomial. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the fourth row of Pascal's triangle. So if you write the triangle out, you get 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, and then 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So I'm going to write out those coefficients. 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. All right, step two. It's a little bit long in words, but it's not too hard of a process. You're going to take a look at your a term. So in our case, it's 3x. And you're going to start by writing that term, 3x. And then you're going to write it to the highest power, 4. And then you're going to keep writing it next to the coefficients. But each time, you decrease the power. So we've got 3x to the 4th, 3x to the 3rd, 3x to the 2nd, 3x to the 1st, and 3x to the 0. So step 3 is the same process that we did for step 2. However, instead of uh, starting with the a term to the n power, you're going to do the b term, 2y, and you're going to start with 0, and you're going to work your way up. So 2y to the 0, 2y to the 1st, 2y to the 2nd, 2y to the 3rd, and 2y to the 4th. So if you look at the powers of each before you simplify this, you have 
each power, so you have 4 plus 0, 3 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 1 plus 3, and 0 plus 4, all of those powers should add to 4, your n. So the last step is to simplify. So we're going to start, let's do the first term. You're going to do the coefficient. So I have 1 times 3 to the 4th power times 2 to the 0. Those would be all of the coefficients. So 3 to the 4th is 81, 1 and 1. So we have 81, then I have x to the 4th, and y to the 0 is 1, so we don't need to write it. And we're going to go plus, here we have 4 times 3 to the 3rd, times 2 to the first. So that would be 4 times 27 times 2. So that's 108 times 2, so that would be 216. I have x cubed, y to the first. The next one here would be 6 times 3 squared times 2 squared, 4. So we have 9 times 6 times 4. So 6 times 9 is 54. So that's 4 times 54. So that's 216 again. So we go plus 216. And then we do the x squared, y squared. All right, the next coefficient here, we have 4 times 3 times 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. That's probably the worst 8 ever. 8. So we have 12 times 8. So we've got 96. x to the 1st, y to the 3rd. And then the last term, we have 1 times 3 to the 0 times 2 to the 4th. So that is plus 16 x to the 0 y to the 4th power. So there would be 3x plus 2y all to the 4th power expanded out.